Hey y'all, Data Orchestration Guru here today. And today in this session, I'm gonna take you through something that's a little unorthodox, a little weird, now that the Tasco API has come out, but still a super useful tool for operators that don't play nice with the Tasco API, which there are still a lot of. Um, so what this is, is the dot map method. Um, so what we're gonna be going through today is a way for you to take some outputs of an upstream task um, and then pass them dynamically to a downstream task to be used as variables within that downstream task. Um, so Taskflow API makes this really easy with the way it, you know you can just quick reference it like a Python function. Um, but dot map is a little clunkier, but it can be used on a wider range of operators because the Taskflow API doesn't support every operator yet. It's you know mainly just Python and SQL. Um, so to kind of get into the nitty gritty of how the map method works, we're going to be taking this map function, um, passing it a list of strings, um, and then generating a downstream task based on the output of that list of objects um, after certain objects have been skipped. Um, and you'll see what that looks like in a second. Um, and then that final task is going to take all that output um, and print it. So simple use case here, but it'll show you a lot of really important concepts uh, that you can apply then to your more complex use cases. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do here, and this time it's really simple, is just bring in some libraries. Um, so DAG, task, date time, and Airflow skip exception, uh, just so that we can skip any error codes that are gonna be generated by kind of our filtering method before we actually map a output object. Um, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the fun stuff actually making the DAG. So here in our DAG declaration, it's pretty simple. Um, just setting a DAG ID, start date, schedule of nine, so this is just an example. Um, catch up false, again, it's just an example, I don't really care. Um, markdown document and as DAG. So now that we've gotten all the basic stuff out of the way, we can start creating our tasks. And boom, we have our first task. So here you see I'm just defining a list of strings, so very basic function that is pretty much just a Python function that returns this list of skip hello, hi, skip hello, hola, and hey. And we're gonna be filtering this based on the amount of characters, so only passing the variables generated here um, that have less than four characters. Um, and this is just kind of important for illustrating the point that map only really works if you have a consistently fixed format for your outputs. So, you know, if you are having, let's say, you know, a dynamic output that can be you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20 characters or let's say even crazier, maybe one time it returns a CSV, one time it returns a PDF, map isn't really great at handling that. Um, it's good at saying, hey, this is a predefined list that I expect, I wanna perform some operation to filter this list and then pass it to a downstream task, but it's not great at doing that dynamically. So saying, you know, based on X rule, do this and then trigger X. Um, it's really meant to say, hey, filter this list of outputs and then pass them downstream as a variable. And now that I've kind of set that stage, let's actually work at filtering the list. And now we're gonna define the function that is actually going to be going through that list of strings, skipping any strings that have a length of less than four. So you can see that if a string is less than, or have a length of more than four, sorry. Um, so if the length of any of these strings that we're passing here, so this is going to be passed as a dictionary, um, say, hey, if this length is less than four, raise, or just say, return that string with an exclamation point, we're all good, we're just given an exclamation of hello. Um, but if it isn't, then we have an else if statement to say, if that string is not, then skip it and raise an airflow skip exception. Um, else, if it is greater than that, return a string again with just a plus exclamation point. Um, so what you're really seeing here is basically just saying, hey, you know, if it is told to skip, um, which you can see it's not in here. Um, so you can see, hey, you know, uh, if the first four letters of this are skip, which is illustrated by string, take all the characters in the string up to the fourth, which would give you skip, then it's going to skip that string. Otherwise, still do the same thing. So even if it is greater than four, as long as it doesn't say skip, then return that string with an exclamation point. So now that we've got our list filtered, let's kind of do a little mesh of the task API, which is what this task is defined with. See, because we have that add task decorator and the dot map function. So right here in this function, what we're doing is taking the list strings. So taking this task, which is really a function and then mapping it skip strings starting with skip. Um, so what this is going to do 
is transform the output of that first task using the map function that we just defined here. So basically saying, hey, look at the outputs of this task and then use this map function that's been defined to say what downstream contributors can actually use this ta uh, data and in which manner. Um, and so you can see here, here's a quick note for non task flow operators, this is how you would define it. So my upstream traditional operator dot output dot map instead of just this handy dandy list strings open close parentheses. Um, so still can do it with non task flow functions. And that's kind of what I wanted to illustrate is this is a way to really extend task flow functions to operators that may not support it. But if you're using operators that don't really support task flow, you're probably just going to need to use all of your operators in a non task flow manner. But as always, you know, as the data orchestration guru, I like to show you every single way possible. Finally, we're, well not finally, but second to finally, we're going to define a task that's actually going to use that dynamic task mapping. It's taking that output from that map function and it's performing some function on that transform list of strings. So here you can see we're just returning say plus the string, which as you know, is just basically this string plus an exclamation point. Um, and so now again, we have to extend this in order to actually make proper use of the mapping function. And so what that looks like is we're using map printing.function.partial to say, hey, we're going to use some additional arguments that aren't actually included in the default definition of this function um, to expand it to pass a string as a transform list. So instead of just a single string, we're actually going to be running this task on every single string within that transform list. And so this is where that mapping function is really helpful because it allows you to create X number of tasks for however many strings are in that list. Um, so for here, map printing function, this is going to create a task that prints for each individual string within that list. Um, so really useful way to kind of meld the two worlds, of, you know, the old world of having to map everything programmatically and the new world of really dynamism within Airflow, you know, being able to generate tasks on the fly for X number of values instead of needing to have everything predefined when you're actually creating the DAG. So it make, gives you a lot more flexibility um, in production. So in conclusion, as you know, I always like to show the graph. So it's gonna be a two-step graph, so that'll be really fun to see, but let's just show it anyways, just for fun. So here we have it, the good old astronomer registry version of our graph view. So you can see we just have that list strings and then map printing function for all those strings. So those little kind of taglines where we actually define how the mapping occurs, those aren't actual tasks. Those are basically just setting the framework for, hey, you know, after you've gotten this list of strings, use this mapping function to actually take that output and pass it to a downstream uh, task. But it doesn't actually constitute a task in itself, which is why mapping is initially a little tricky to get your head around, but it is really useful for some of these non-standard task flow use cases. Um, so in conclusion, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you learned something. If you have any questions or you want to see something else on this channel, please let me know, drop it in the comments, shoot me an email, whatever. And if you want to see more, just like and subscribe. We'd love to have you around the community. Have a good one.